All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is uh, James Webb Telescope to Capture First Images of the Big Bang. All right. What triggered the Big Bang? This has been the biggest question in astronomy ever since its proposal by Georges Lemaitre in 1927. Perhaps the biggest issue with this question is that we have no way of actually seeing the Big Bang. But that hasn't stopped NASA from trying. NASA's newest invention, named the James Webb Telescope, is designed to look so far into space that we will be able to capture images from the earliest moments of the universe. We have never even come close to a telescope with this much power. So scientists are expecting that these new findings will completely change the way we think about space. Hey guys, uh, there's a, a team of scientists that are that have gotten together. They um, they use the name Sears, S E E R, guys, right? And uh, they absolutely probably will be the ones to actually find it because they're doing a lot of like deep field research. If that makes any sense, guys. Um, so I'm thinking that if anyone's going to find it, it's going to be them because they're the ones that are pretty much digging into areas that are like 570 million years after the Big Bang. So if they're that far out, it's going to be them. I'm guessing, guys. Let's get it. So just how powerful is the James Webb Telescope? It's wild. And most importantly, how will this futuristic technology give us our best bet at discovering the origins of the universe? After 20 years and $9.7 billion of development, the James Webb Telescope is finally in space. That may seem like a big number, but when you think about how powerful this telescope really is, then it starts to make a lot more sense. The James Webb has the ability to help scientists look back 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. This will grant them access to so much more information about how stars are formed and what makes all cosmic entities work. Having a better understanding of the Big Bang events will allow scientists to finally get a glimpse of the early universe. But how exactly can this miracle machinery help us wrap our heads around the Big Bang? Well, first, you have to know why understanding the Big Bang is so important. Because it's us. It's us. That's why it's so important, bro. It's important because it, if we can't understand it completely, we will have almost a complete understanding of the universe. Think about that. What is it about this cosmic event that always gets scientists so fired up and excited? The basic answer is that it's because the Big Bang is what started it all. If you want to understand the universe, you need to understand how it started. For all we know about the Big Bang, there is so much more still in the dark about this historic event that started, well, everything. Understanding the Big Bang is understanding space, science and life. You can see why scientists would want to have a firm grasp of it. To get a better idea of how the James Webb Telescope will look so far back in time, let's take a second to look at the Andromeda Galaxy which is the closest big galaxy to our very own Milky Way galaxy. Andromeda is close to us, but it is still millions of miles away from home. Yet, you can still view it with your naked eye or with the help of telescopes. But when you view the Andromeda galaxy, you aren't actually looking at it in the present time. Right. What you are seeing is how it was 2.2 million years ago. Yeah, we're just looking at the remnants, guys. That's it, literally. On a little test, guys. Remember this. The reason for this is because it takes that amount of time for light to travel all the way from Andromeda to Earth. It's sort of like time traveling without ever having to leave our own planet. I mean, we, in fact, are time traveling every single time we look at the night sky. Because of this, scientists have been able to look at far more distant galaxies, which means they are going further and further back in time. The more distant the galaxy, the longer it takes for light to reach us, and therefore, the further back in time you can see. As of now, the most distant galaxy ever discovered, GNZ11, was spotted by the Hubble telescope and gave NASA a great look at it a long, long time ago. 
So any GNZ11 looks nothing more than an unremarkable red blob. But to scientists with their incredible instruments, they are seeing light from 13.4 billion years ago, which is about 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. In terms of space exploration, it doesn't get much closer than 400 million years after the Big Bang. Hubble's discoveries have allowed scientists to see how stars are formed and have led them to question some of the time-tested assumptions made about space and stars. Now, as great as the Hubble is, you need to remember that the James Webb Telescope is, in many ways, light years ahead of the Hubble. Oh yeah, guys, let me listen. The technology that's inside the James Webb versus the Hubble, uh, these don't even make any sense. They only speak the same language, basically. Um, I think eventually the Hubble will end up falling back to Earth. Hopefully uh, we know where it's going to land before it drops, though. It leaves the iconic Hubble in the dust in terms of what it can see and right. in terms of its tremendous power. Yeah, but we're not going to sit here and, and throw slander on the Hubble, though. We're not doing that. For example, take the fact that the Hubble telescope primarily observes the universe at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. This is much different than the James Webb Telescope, which will primarily use infrared wavelengths. The reason NASA and the scientists behind the James Webb decided to focus on infrared wavelengths is because more distant objects become more highly redshifted, and their light is pushed from UV and optical into the near-infrared. Observations of these distant objects, like the first galaxies formed in the universe, for example, requires an infrared telescope. For this reason, the James Webb is not really considered to be a replacement of the famous Hubble. Instead, think of it as its predecessor that will give us new and different views of the universe than we could see before. Another reason the new James Webb is such a big deal is because of the sheer size of its mirror. Coming in at six and a half meters tall, or 22 feet, the 18 gold-plated hexagonal segments that complete the mirror is almost three times the size of Hubble's mirror. Even better, James Webb has instruments on board that will let scientists actually probe the chemical makeup of the galaxies it points to. Not only will the teams on Earth be able to see these newly formed galaxies, but they will also be able to study them in unparalleled ways. It'll answer many questions such as how certain elements are made and how clouds of dust and gas collapse to form stars and the planetary systems around them. In essence, James Webb will have the ability and power to watch entire galaxies form. Of course. I mean, eventually. Hold on. Eventually. This isn't the only thing the James Webb Telescope is doing. In fact, James Webb was made for exploration tasks far bigger than just looking back to the period when the Big Bang happened. Mm -hmm. James Webb is also going on a long search for observations about life beyond Earth. The telescope is going to be studying the atmospheres of thousands of exoplanets floating around the galaxy. James Webb will be examining the habitable zones of distant stars, looking for regions that could contain the building blocks of life. This isn't because... Hey guys, does anyone know the power source of uh, James Webb? And the reason why I'm asking you this is because I haven't actually researched anything regarding the actual power source. And I'm just wondering if it's anywhere similar to what Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 both use, where they are, for the most part, um, creating energy by allowing things to decay. Right? Just to kind of put it bluntly and smallly here. Um, it's allowing things to decay, and then that decay is actually creating electrical energy. That's kind of how Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are kind of moving. Um, I'm just wondering if it's something similar to that. I mean, it last pretty much a long time, but I'm pretty sure James Webb is requiring uh, much more power than the uh, the other ones uh, need. Um, but I would actually like to see one day James Webb and like a Voyager collaboration, someone build something like that, um, that can actually travel uh, faster and in a very interstellar nature. Guys. We are planning to rocket away from Earth and plant our flag in any of these planets. Instead, James Webb is going to study these Earth-like worlds to get a better grip on why life happens 
and what leads to the miracle of existence we all take for granted. When you think about all that James Webb can accomplish, you now understand why so many people consider it to be the most important thing NASA has done in decades. Absolutely. Not only will the telescope get a good look at distant planets that can sustain life, but it would also take a look so far back in time that it will completely change the way we think about the universe. I think for the science-minded bunch, absolutely will change how most people look at the sky and think about where we all come from. Then there's going to be a very you know specific ilk that absolutely will disregard all of this information because it doesn't confirm their whatever human belief system that they have, right? So there are going to be two camps here. I mean, yeah, confirming the Big Bang is one thing, um, but it opens up a whole new can. It's good and bad. I think for the science aspect of it, it's amazing to actually get the truth and get like proof of things. But for the people who are like religious minded, they're not, I'm not sure that they would really enjoy that type of information because it will go against everything that they know. And that's kind of rough guys. Um, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day uh, thoroughly.